Welcome to my presentation on the Fields plugin. Um, I've been um, using this plugin on and off for the past four or five years. And um, I think that it's still uh, worth considering if you're not going on um, JavaScript frameworks but are still using GSPs. But first, let me just go real quickly through who I am. My name is Soren. I'm from Denmark. I'm a nerd. I've been a Java developer since the year 2000, and in 2009 I discovered Groovy and Grails. Uh, actually, at the same time where I uh, started uh, GreatConf, um, together with uh, Guillaume Laforge. Um, I like Groovy and Grails a lot, and I work for a small company in Denmark that you can try and pronounce. And then. Of course, I need to advertise my own conference. We have the 10th year in a, in a row conference in Copenhagen. Um, it's a three days conference, so here you can come and get your next um, groovy fix. Celebrate with us. There will be beers. So for this uh, session, um, we um, will be going through what the field plugin is and why we should use it. And then we'll look at some code. And the second half of the agenda is we'll look at some more code, um, talk a little bit about the internationalization in uh, the fields plugin. And finally, you can just ask questions while the uh, uh, talk is running instead of waiting till the end. I can kind of see you all, um, so if you raise your hand, that should be a good chance. Otherwise, try and make a noise. The slides, which I'm going through right here, is available on uh, this URL. Um, I'll tweet it afterwards where you can find it as well. So what is the Fields plugin? Well, it's a plugin where you can centralize uh, the rendering of uh, input fields, uh, the wrappers around input fields, uh, the display of uh, uh, beam properties, and the wrapper around that display, and um, also for showing uh, tables and uh, uh, input forms. The last two things were added on when they started using the fields plugin for the Grails uh, uh, 3 scaffolding. So what does it aim for? It, well, it aims for uh, having some good default for your uh, property fields. So uh, it, it starts out very coarse grain, and then you can fine grain it down to a specific property on a specific do domain class or uh, POGO. So the idea is that you shouldn't copy and, and paste around uh, markup for uh, uh, labels and error messages and the containers itself. Um, there's a support for a property path, so you can dot yourself into uh, um, a nested um, beans. Um, internationalization is uh, really easy. Um, and you can also, uh, if you create a plugin, you can um, hook into the fields plugin and provide um, your own um, implementations of uh, fields renderings. And it's, of course, open source. Um, it was uh, created by Robert Fletcher, which unfortunately has left for the dark side at uh, Netflix. Um, and there are some large contributions from these people. So why use it? Well, it's used in the default uh, scaffolding in Grail, so it, if you're using that, you, you might want to check it out so you have an idea of what's going on. So it enables customization of uh, scaffolded views. Um, it keeps uh, your GSP files dry, which is don't repeat yourself. And it gives you a very, uh, uh, it gives a common place for defining the input widgets and value displays. So let's just set the stage here. I know it's a bit small, but I hope you can see it. It's just three small uh, domain classes that I have in my project. Uh, it circles around a, a conference, so it has speakers. 
It has talks and it has tags that you could put on the talks. Very basic, but it gives us some one-to-many and many-to-one and many-to-many -many relationships and uh, some various input field types. So let's just recap from uh, before there was something called the fields plugin and maybe even before uh, the new scaffolding in Grails. You would do something like this. It's, it's even narrowed down, but uh, the takeaway is that we render the form here. This is the create form, but it could also have been the edit form. So either the template form here or uh, the, the older version of uh, rendering a template. Um, yeah, uh, and, and then the, the, the pesky part about it, the uh, form itself, which is uh, a lot of uh, repeating uh, labels and divs surrounding labels and so on and so forth. And it becomes really annoying and uh, error prone when you start copying and pasting this around. So in all, a lot of uh, co lines of code and right now, with the Fields plugin, we'll stay dry. So there are seven tags in the tag library for the Fields plugin. Um, a, a widget, a field, with and all. And I'll come back to what they uh, all are doing. And then there are, f uh, that, and, and these four fields are created for rendering the form, and then there are three, uh, widget, or, uh, three tags for uh, displaying data. So it's a display widget, uh, display, and table. So there's a very small amount of terminology here. Uh, we have widgets. That would be the input, uh, input uh, widgets, like an input text field, or a selector, or a text area. And then there's a wrapper, and that is what contains the label and uh, the widget itself. And that goes both for the display widget and the display and for field and widget. So just a few examples. Um, here we have um, a, a div. Um, so, so this big part here, that would be the wrapper. And the widget itself would be the text field. And the same goes for here. It's just a date picker. That's the widget. But as you can see, the, the remainder is basically the same, except for, of course, that it's uh, labeled differently. So same go for a text area or a selector. So, so it, it, it is, it, that is basically uh, what the fields plugin tried to solve, is not repeating yourself. So let's dig into some code. Here. Oh, my sister sends me a photo. That's very nice of her. I'm just going to let her not send me anything right now. So I have a small project here. It's, um, it's a regular Grails app. Um, it has, like I said, the three domain uh, objects here. Uh, the speaker, uh, which compared to um, what I had in my slides, it's a little bit different because it doesn't have the date of birth yet, but it will. Um, the talk, it belongs to a speaker and it has many tags. And then the many-to-many -many relationship is that a tag can be put, placed on multiple talks. Very basic. Um, there's, I've created a few services um, just so that I can handle the data, the data services like uh, what uh, Graham showed earlier. So a speaker service to get and list and count and delete and save. All what you need for if you would, were to create um, uh, the scaffolding views um, and scaffolding controllers, the, the new version 3.3 will actually create a data service as well to bring you in that direction. And then just uh, initial data service that will load in uh, data from uh, a REST API that I have for GreatConf, where um, uh, data is presented. And uh, um, 
That's basically it, and then it starts from Bootstrap. Uh, it just calls the initial data service. So let's just uh, run the application. Uh, let's just run the application here. It's already running, but I just... I'm, to, to make sure that I have uh, enough time, I'm going to live code a bit, and I am also going to reset my uh, Git uh, repository to certain places to make sure that we get, co uh, we get to cover as much as we can during the talk. And um, for most of this, we should be able to do it without restarts. There are things that... And I'm not sure if it's a bug in Grails or if it's the Fields plugin that has a quirk. Um, but um, let's just um, look at a regular uh, plain old uh, Grails application here. And we have the three controllers. That's, um, I didn't show you that. Uh, very simply, um, each of the controllers here is the speaker controller. They all have a scaffolding of whatever they are doing. So there's nothing in them. Uh, I let Grails handle that throughout this uh, talk. So um, we have speakers, uh, data written from, uh, from um, the API. And um, this is what it looks like. I haven't changed anything. So um, the speaker image, the place in what could appear to be random order. Uh, but it's not. Um, and let's uh, learn how that works first. So we can control a few things without actually having views to work on. Um, and the first thing we can do is, um, in our uh, speaker domain class, we can see that uh, what it does is it actually takes and, and uses that as the order of, um, of uh, uh, in the table as uh, the column order. So, and, and I've only def defined uh, image and talks. So I only get image and talks as the first two, and then I get the rest in, I think, pretty much random order. But if I wanted it in, in, a, in a certain order, I could instead uh, write, I want name first, and I want um, uh, company, and I want Twitter. And I'm just going to use the, the default uh, constraints so that I'm just calling it like it was a method. And of course, I want the buyer as well. Let's just. And this is the one of the places that where I might have to reload the container. So I'll just give that a few seconds. So, but what happens now is that uh, the fields plugin interrogates um, the constraints and those comes in the order defined in, in the constraints block. Maybe next time when I restart, I should do it without debugging. We're not going to go very much into the debugging. So now we get it in a different order. That's all fine. Um, I could also have um, uh, done the ordering um, in a different way. I'm just going to. I have a list of things I need to do here, so uh, nope. I need to log in. So I could also um, then start looking at um, the scaffold of views, but I don't have those yet. So right now, the only place that I can control this is here. One of the other things that I can control is. If we go into uh, a, a speaker and start editing it, we'll see that uh, everything is a text field because it's all strings. Uh, one of the things that is uh, a bit of a mishap is the bio. The bio is a, a blob, a text field that should be a text area. And while I don't have access to the uh, scaffolding views yet, I can still control it. Um, by uh, uh, altering my um, bio and uh, use a, a not so known um, constraint, which is not really a constraint, but a, a directive to the view. So I could say the widget I want to render here should be text area. And 
rerunning the application. Um, and that's one of the places that where I have to rerun it again. Um, should change the UI to what I want. So now I get a text area instead, which is nicer looking. Um, yeah, so let's bring in uh, the views. Um, and while we're at it, just let's just go to uh, this place in history. Um, uh, almost the same. Um, what I have now is uh, the speaker, uh, um, the speaker's view, and let's just look at the index. And the index has one tag, and one tag only that has to do with the fields plugin, and that's the F table. So the F table is what renders the entire table, and it goes out and looks for a file called uh, templates uh, in 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 the view folder templates underscore fields underscore um, table uh, dot gsp and that view is not here yet uh, I'll show you where you can find it because as some have noticed there is a, uh, uh, a an error in the fields plugin documentation that has an install templates which is not working at all that was from the grails 2x line of the plugin um, I have a, a ticket on the issues for uh, actually wanted to provide some more help with uh, um, getting templates back so that we can render something that gives us a starting point. So we uh, control already um, the text area. Let's look at the... Um, Starting to uh, making this look a little bit more like uh, Bootstrap. Uh, let me see if I can find that. I have that somewhere right here. Um, we have the CSS of a Bootstrap, and what I find interesting is the forms. They look a little bit nicer than what is in the Grails. So, uh, for example, for for the sake of the example, I'm gonna. Uh, try and uh, work my way into this. And, but before we do that, um, I'm just going to go back to my slides uh, here and talk a little bit about the custom rendering in the Fields plugin. So we'll look at template lookup and uh, how templates are weaved into each other and which parameters are available in templates. And finally, a little bit about the wrapper and widget selection. There's a, a, a the fields plugin go through a a, a multitude of uh, of lookups for finding the right template, and we'll get back to that in very shortly. So, it goes from very fine grained to a generic lookup. So it's based on the controller name, it's based on the action name, the bean type, uh, the bean name, and the property type and the property name. So you can see there's lots of steps in this. So what happens when the Grails uh, uh, fields plugins try to find a template, it looks first in Grails view, control name, action name, property name. And if it doesn't find the widgets there, it will go through property type. And then it will go to action name, and then it will go to property name, and then it will go to property type. So it could be that you want a view rendered differently when you create it than when you edited it. So it could be that you want a read-only version during editing, and or you even want a text representation instead of a field that you can input in. And then you want it to go into the action edit and make a, a field there. So it does make sense that it makes this big lookup. And then when it's done searching uh, for the particular controller, it will start searching the fields uh, uh, view folder uh, for uh, the class name and the property name, super class property name, uh, association type, one to many, many to one, many 
too many and one too many. Uh, uh, then the property type and the property superclass, and then I'm running out of space here. Finally, it looks in a one called default, and that should be it, hopefully, so we're not running out of space anyway. So a template lookup, like uh, for a speaker, would be a uh, speaker name, and then it will go through all these um, uh, folders to look for, for that. And the same would happen if we do, did it for the wrapper. So it will look for, oh, this is the case that it looks for the wrapper, and then it will look for the field afterwards. So uh, these are the places where we can place our widgets and wrapper files. So we're just going to skip this and go to this. So in our fields and widget and display and display widget, we have access to uh, a model that um, the fields plugin uh, creates for us. So we get the bean, the property, the value. We get the label. So the label has already been translated, so we don't have to do a message. Um, uh, we can just insert the label itself, and it has automatically been run through uh, the G message uh, for internationalization. So we have access to the type. We have knowledge about if it's required. We have uh, access to the constraints. We have access to the persistent property. And we know if it's invalid, we have a list of the errors related to that, 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 just that one field, not the entire bean. And um, we could also have access to the prefix and for fields and display, we also ha have access to the widget itself. So that's what is actually being rendered for input. And the same goes for the display. Nothing different there. So let's go back to our code here. And um, I have already scaffolded the views. Um, let me see. So uh, the first thing I wanted to show you is um, where's that? Yeah, let's uh, look at the um, scaffolding the image view. I'm just going to move a little bit forward here. Um, so what I have now is when we look at the output. Um, drag this into our window itself. So let's go back to the speakers list. Now I have an image, because what I had before was the URL for the speaker, and that's uh, fetched from uh, uh, the great conf server. Um, and that's handled uh, very simply by, in my speakers folder, I know it's a bit difficult to see over here on the side, but I hope you can see it. Uh, I have a display widget, and that display widget is what controls displaying in this case, um, the image. And the value is the property value of that exact bean. And then I have the bean name. So I have access to the bean itself, so I can, and that's the instance of a, 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 a speaker, and he has a name, so I can also actually put in the, the alt value here, and then I can, for, uh, uh, if there were no access to the server, it will show the URL anyway with the speaker's name. So let's just uh, quickly see that we have what we expect to have in the HTML here. Come on. So it does say, it does say that the alt is Alex Santa Klein and what the HTTP address is of the image. Yeah. So, how much time do I have left? Um, so that's the first example of how you can uh, do a display widget. So um, around the widget is just a TD. So we can see that uh, there's no wrapper for displays in, in the default scaffolding. Um, so let's let's start looking at the edit for a, a a person. 
It's still the uh, squarish looking and not the, um, the bootstrap uh, looking uh, feels we have. And um, we should be able to change that by going into our uh, fields, and then we need a folder, uh, and it should be uh, named fields, and then default. That's where we put the search order for fields. So let's just um, make a, um, a new file here um, called wrapper DSP. And in here, we'll just do a G uh, text field name equals, and then from the list we had before, we know it's a property. And um, for the value, we know it's the value. And then we want to uh, have it look for um, a bit more bootstrap uh, uh, look and field. So let's just quickly check the bootstrap uh, page and it says, uh, if we look here, oh that was a bit too far down. Oh, I totally got lost here. Form and the basic example here is that our input field should have the class uh, form control. So we can add that to our um, here. So let's go back and look at um, our form, refresh it, and nothing. OK, here's uh, one thing that you need to know, that uh, the fields plugin does all it can to cache the path of a widget uh, for a certain bean at a certain property, so it doesn't have to go search for it over and over and over again and degrade performance. So while we run in development mode, it's, um, the likelihood is that we want uh, some control over the caching mechanism. So let's just go into um, the configuration and application, and for that we need um, to disable the caching and we can do that here. So if we add Grails, plugin, fields, disable, lookup cache, and actually let's just um, um, see, I have the server running here, and we can see that um, I should have the server running here. Oh yeah, I also, one thing I also did uh, in, in the reset here was uh, add a uh, locker that uh, locks for the plugin field so we can see what it is looking for. That can be very helpful. So for that reason, it didn't pick that up either. Uh, I don't think it likes me resetting um, the entire Grails uh, code base uh, for the application. So let's just really quickly wait for it to um, reload. And meanwhile, I can see if I can find out where I was. So now we have the application running again, and hopefully It didn't change much, did it? But oh, what is that? Come on. Oh, it has that some kind of plug in there. Uh, so the hmm? that's odd. So we have, let me just check that, it's the right. Uh, 
yeah, so at, what, for coming back to the logging, um, it finds the fields template and looks for the default wrapper, and that's the last uh, uh, thing it, it looks for. And I think I might have uh, accidentally reset to a wrong uh, spot in my history. So, um, yeah, um, I erased it. So let me just do it again. Um, make a folder. And in that, make a file called underscore wrapper. And I should name it right, otherwise it's definitely not going to find it. Let's just do that again. Um, There we go. And again, G text field name property value. Value and then the class. We should be so lucky that it should on the So let's see. Oh, now it starts looking different. Uh, but it's not exactly what we wanted, because right now we have the problem with uh, everything being considered a text field. And that's because we put the uh, widget in the default folder, and now it thinks that everything should be rendered as a text field. So that, that's not the right way of doing it. So what we should have done is, instead of uh, having it uh, here in the field's default, we should have had it in... fields string, and then we can take the wrapper from uh, the default and move it into string. And now you'll see that at least for the talks, it's not rendering uh, what we want, but um, the text area is also just looked up as a string. So if we want to have a certain case for that, we should um, make a text area folder and also have a widget in that uh, called a text area. So instead of the text field, we can use text area. And it has, still has a name, but the value for text area goes in, in the tag itself. Value and text area. So now we have a text area again. It still doesn't look quite right. The label has disappeared, and some other things doesn't really feel right. So we're probably going to need a, uh, a wrapper for, for wrapping our widgets. And luckily, with the wrapper, the wrapper is, um, is, is generic for all input fields. It, it, at least it, it usually is. So. Um, let's fast forward a little bit. So now it starts looking nicer. So what I got now was um, I got a wrapper uh, in the default folder. So the wrapper is um, what uh, carries the widget. And um, here you can see we use the label. Um, we also use that if it's invalid, it will be marked as invalid. And um, we have a label. Uh, we have a star required. If this required, there will be an extra star behind the property. And if there's an error, we'll actually get the error value rendered just below the field. Um, some like that, some don't, but it's optional. And what happens, let's just go in in here and, and make the image not on the URL. Um, and now, let's, I have some problems with the, so here, 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 here. 
So we create, so it still writes it up there because I haven't touched the template, but it also writes it below uh, the default output. So it's easy to get the input where, uh, get um, the error message to the field where it belongs. So um, we have, a, I have a few more widgets that I want to show you. Um, and uh, instead of uh, getting them in one by one. I think I'll just bring them all in right uh, at the same time here. So we have um, the Twitter. We all want a, a, a Twitter at, at the Twitter. So that's just a, another uh, bootstrap thing. Um, and if I had used Twitter in, in another place um, uh, as a property name, uh, the property is see fields. No, I have that at the speaker. Where is it? It's hiding. Domain class Twitter is because any domain class that has a Twitter property will be um, rendered uh, as a, an input group. So, so that's a way to centralize uh, Twitter on various uh, domain objects. So that's just for one example. We also now have um, uh, the many-to-many -many for talks. Let's go back to the speakers list here and just... Uh, talks. So now instead of um, when we go into edit mode, we now render the talks as uh, more bootstrap looking, um, as you can see there. Um, I'm always running out of time here. Sorry about that. And also if we go to um, to the tags and take any tag here with a few lines on it and edit. We uh, get instead of before it would just be a um, normal um, multi select, now it's a, a, a multi select for um, a Twitter bootstrap, so it, it, it looks nicer. Um, we could also change that into a, uh, it could be a a list of checkboxes, so you can check off the ones that you want instead of multi-select. Mm, and uh, let's look at the talk here and edit that. And that has also a many to many uh, for the tags. So what they contain, they are a little bit more advanced because uh, um, it turned out when I was looking at this, and I've made a mental note to myself, actually I wrote it down, that um, if you have the many-to-many -many widget, uh, you have to get a hold of the uh, persistent property and the, the associated entity that that property has to do with. And then you can uh, actually, uh, because Groovy is nice and dynamic, uh, you can find the Java class on the association and then call list which means that you can fill out the list. Uh, the problem is that if it was only a subset of the list, you would have to figure out another way of doing that. Uh, the same goes, and, and this of course has a multiple true because it's a many-to-many -many association. Uh, the uh, many-to-one association is almost alike, uh, except that it um, doesn't have um, the the multiple uh, in here. Uh, and the one-to-many um, is even more uh, uh, advanced because it looks up uh, the associated entity and it finds the associated controller name from the associated uh, association. And, um, and then first it lists all the, uh, the value is actually a list so it lists those with a link to the current talk, and then it adds a uh, link to create a new one. And all this source code is, will, by the way, be available. Um, so 
Next thing I want to show you um, is we have, uh, again, on the speakers page, we have, um, or for that matter, on the talks page, they could enter HTML in their description. Actually, they couldn't. It was markup, but the feed that I got is uh, HTML. So wouldn't it be nice to have a rich editor? And um, for that, we could bring in a, uh, a uh, JavaScript plugin. And I'm quickly going to do that. Um, so what I've done is I'm using um, a, a, Grails, a Gradle plugin uh, from uh, Craig Burke called uh, Client Resources. And what it does, it's, it's a plugin. It's uh, defined here as the plugin. And then down here, I can say I have, want my client dependencies to be in this case, a, a node um, um, package manager, um, a summer node. And then when I run that, um, I will be getting in my assert another folder called uh, vendor. And in here, it will download summer node for me. So I don't have to worry about um, if now, it because I put a star, it will just bring in the latest version. That's, of course, not the best idea. But in my case, it works well. So what we get now is that uh, for that, it has to reload, unfortunately. So um, we'll see that in a minute to uh, bring in as much. I've just been told that I have five minutes. So let's just look at uh, two more templates uh, that we need um, to look at here. Um, so while that runs, let's just restart the server. And um, we can look in views. Now I have another folder for you. It's called uh, the templates. I should have another folder called templates. Didn't I reset that? Probably didn't. There. There it was. Templates field. So. So the, the, um, as you can see, before, um, now it's going to be the new talks list. So before it was just a regular uh, uh, table. Now it's a table enhanced with the uh, uh, classes from the Bootstrap, bootstrap uh, library. So it looks a little bit nicer. And uh, that is simply done by adding these to the table. And I promised you that I would show you where to find that. And that's... Um, because that's not something you'll find in the, you'll find it in the source code, so you can go to uh, the fields plugin um, in the folder called uh, Grails app use templates fields. There are a list and a table. The list is for uh, editing uh, fields without knowing the amount of uh, the the current bean number of properties that will render those, and the table is for rendering the table. And um, so the rest is, is what it was. So there's no changes here. But you can see again, it uses the F display to uh, render the, the property. And um, let's just look at. I had one thing. Yeah, that was uh, if we edit this, uh, we now have a nice, rich text editor. And the only thing I did uh, for the text area uh, field, um, let's see, text area field here, widget, is that I added a little bit of JavaScript. So I, of course, included the JavaScript and CSS styling in application. Uh, JS and application.css. Um, I did add one thing to uh, the layout template, and that is when I use the asset uh, script, I need to add the asset the first script. So it will pick up all the scripts that are generated throughout the page and putting them below uh, the, the, the JavaScript import. Otherwise, it, they won't work. 
Um, but that gives us a nice uh, rich text editor where we can uh, highlight uh, things, for example. And it should be noted that uh, um, the fields plugin by default output everything as raw. Uh, so the, it is, um, it, there has to be done work uh, uh, from the developer to um, prevent uh, cross site scripting, unfortunately. Um, I haven't figured out uh, the best way of doing that at the moment. But, um, so, so that's why it renders HTML nicely here, even though it probably should have been escaped. And um, finally, I want to show you one last uh, uh, thing. Um, uh, adding the bootstrap um, uh, date picker instead of a regular date picker. Actually, I think I can show you the regular date picker before. Uh, there are two things here. Uh, I think I have time for that, right? Otherwise, just stop me. Yeah, I should be done, and I am, I'm almost done. So right now, I've added a one uh, date of birth to the domain class uh, of the speaker, and I've uh, guessed one date, birth date. I don't know if his birth year is 1970, but I found his birth date on, on Facebook, and I asked Paul King of his birthday. So now I have two birth dates in my application. So let's just do home and speakers. And now you can see that uh, we now have a birth date out here for Alvaro. He's probably not 70, but it's probably close. And edit. And now you can see that the edit field is because I've added a local date. And the widget for that is a field with a type date, so it uses the HTML5 date. And if you look at the source code, you can see how to add a Twitter bootstrap instead. But I don't have time to show that. So let's just uh, recap really quick. Oh yeah, internationalization. Uh, look at the slides. It's really, really easy. It, uh, it looks at the... Uh, B name, and uh, so the translation of date of birth on speaker is speaker date of birth label. So fill that out, uh, and fill it out in Spanish or in Danish, and um, you get translations on your UI. So the summary, really quickly. My main takeaway is always to keep your things dry. And question and answers, we don't have time for that. So that's it. <laughs> Feel free to come and ask me questions.